What's up guys, my name's Anthony and today we are back with another Ethereum video. I haven't made one of these in a while, uh, but I want to talk a little bit about Ethereum 2.0, talk about how we are due for a breakout and what direction I think we're likely headed. Got a news article I want to share with you surrounding Ethereum lately. But I just want to tell you a little bit about the channel if it's your first time stopping by. Crypto Ride is a YouTube channel that helps you responsibly invest in cryptocurrency through crypto news videos, technical analysis, and crypto project review videos. So if you're serious about adding to your wealth and doing it through cryptocurrency and speculative investments in a safe way that's not going to put your whole financial life at risk, this is a good channel to subscribe to, and you can do that in the bottom right corner of your screen. But let's take a look at the markets here on CoinGecko, and as you can see, we've had a red day. We've had a red week, and Ethereum itself, the one we're talking about, down 3.8%. 7.6% on the week, dipping below 200. Uh, this could potentially be a really interesting buying price, but what this price is more importantly at the moment from a technical standpoint is it is the convergence of a pretty large uh, symmetrical triangle. So I want to show you that because this price is due to pop sometime within the next couple of days. So we'll talk more about that in a second, but first I wanna talk about this article here, and I wanna just propose this question to you. I'm gonna ask you to comment on this in the comments section, but Ethereum 2.0 will be a bigger market catalyst than the Bitcoin halving. You know, I think the question remains, with all the hype that surrounded the Bitcoin halving, which was an event that was scheduled to happen and we knew would happen, you know, it was there was much more certainty. People say the price is already baked in and, you know, people have different opinions about that. It depends what you believe. But now we have this potential much larger catalyst coming with Ethereum 2.0. And I think the effects of that or the person who wrote this article thinks the effects of that could be massive. So let me read here a little bit for you. Due to the fact that the start of the historical parabolic rallies in the Bitcoin price lined up with previous halvings, our reduction in block rewards has long been deemed the crypto market's biggest and most promising catalyst for a bull run. But the introduction of Ethereum 2.0, a blockchain upgrade slated to dramatically improve the speed and usability of the network, because remember that is on a much, on a very basic level, the main hangup of Ethereum was its lack of speed and scalability. In the coming months may do more to move markets than the halving that transpired just days ago, as I mentioned. So while the effects of the Bitcoin halving are known in advance, as I mentioned, the effects of ETH 2.0 will have on the tokenomics of Ethereum are a bit more variable, as there are a number of factors at play within the upgrade that could restrict supply and could increase demand. So the venture investor Adam Cochran went on a huge tweet storm on Twitter um, not too long ago, if you haven't heard about this, and he was talking about how this is going to restrict supply and increase demand, which of course would lead to higher prices. So these are some of the points he was mentioning. He had seven points, I believe, in this article, but let me just explain some of this. So ETH supply inflation will be sliced by more than 50%. He believes this is going to be happening because Ethereum 2.0 will move from a proof-of-work model to a proof-of-stake model. So the people, the Ethereum holders, will have to stake their Ethereum. They'll have to hold it long-term and earn rewards at that, which is a good thing, but that will remove ETH tokens from the market. Right, that'll dramatically decrease the inflation of ETH supply by over 50% according to his calculations. Oh, I'm sorry, according to Vitalik Buterin himself, founder of Ethereum. Due to Ethereum 2.0 making the blockchain much faster and adaptable, Cochrane expects the demand for ETH in the form of gas to increase. So gas is used on the Ethereum network. So with the release of ETH 2.0, we're gonna see ETH drastically increase its transactions per second and therefore its commercial and consumer viability. So not just retail investors like you and I or people who are staking, but businesses, of course, the whole D5 movement, all the projects that come along with that um, will potentially see a lot of growth from this because Ethereum network is going to be more attractive um, due to the upgrade. So these are all important things to consider. And again, I want you to comment, do you think that the Ethereum 2.0 upgrade will be as big or bigger than the halving 
why or why not? So let me get my face out of here. We'll talk TA. So here is my Ethereum chart. And the thing I want to point out to you is that ever since really about April 28th, we've really been consolidating and we haven't been moving too much. So prices are getting closer together. The fluctuations are smaller, as you can see here down in the ATR, which is the average true range, which measures volatility and moving averages. But you can see this has come down all the way since May 12th when we had the huge crypto sell-off that I'm sure everyone will remember for a long time. But it's getting really interesting because you also see these this big symmetrical triangle if you forget about this pattern in the blue here if you just look at these white lines you see these two um lines converging in on each other and this is a pretty big symmetrical triangle and this top one here which is actually lighter in color that represents our medium term downtrend which started all the way back on February 13th. So this has been going for about three months now. So we're not talking about something small. We're talking about um, some decent overhead resistance. And you can see every time we try and break it, we are getting knocked back down. Also, I want to talk about this blue rectangle. This is a parallel channel that I've identified. Um, basically, you can see that we have been within this very predictable parallel channel. Like, so for those of you swing trading, you're probably having a blast with this. Congratulations. But we've been doing this since March 17th and, um, we are moving upwards. So I guess you can say, you know, I don't want to say we're an uptrend because we've got all this resistance over top, but we are moving upwards in this channel. What do we have to do to break out of it? Well, we would have to go above technically $232 and break out and stay above on a close. You can see we tried to do it here, but then we fell right back down once we hit the overhead resistance here. Now, here's the interesting part. Now, you can see these are really coming to a head here. So there's not much room. You see how wide this bigger triangle was back over here? Right, and now how close it is. So you had all this room to play inside the parallel channel in the past. But now, even just to go to the top of the parallel channel, you would have to break the overhead resistance. So this is a critical moment, and these lines will literally hit each other on May 23rd. So we are talking about a breakout sometime within the next, I would say, probably five days, four days, either to the up or the downside. And I want to talk about what they might look like. Now, for the upside breakout, I'm going to take the top of the downtrend to the lowest point. I'm not going to go all the way down because that was colossal, but you can take that and you can measure it from the point of the breakout. So if we were to break out tomorrow, let's say our upside potential, and it's not necessarily going to go that high. Breakouts don't always go that high, and they certainly don't go there in one day, but we could be looking somewhere around the $350 range, and it wouldn't go there in one day. It would take a couple of weeks, most likely. It would take time to go there. Um, and it probably wouldn't be that far, but this would be what I want you to take from this video right now is this would be a significant upside breakout if we could break above this white line. And the price to watch right now is $210, $208, $209, right about there. If we get above $208, let's say over the next day or two and stay there and we see an increase on volume, then we could start to see this thing really move. Mark my words. You can see we are sitting right around the 50% mark from our swing high to our swing low. So we're dead smack in the middle, right in the middle of this ascending triangle. And we've got all this convergence happening, just waiting to break out. So just to show you where we could potentially hit resistance on the upside. Of course, we've got resistance here at the 0.618 FIB level. That's 215. If we break that, it should be smooth sailing because you can see there's no resistance here. So it should be smooth sailing all the way up to 250. And then, you know, we'll see if we can get all the way up to 290 and some of that other stuff we talked about. But those would be the two levels on the upside. If we break down, expect to find support at, I'd say, $175. If you're trying to accumulate and add to your position, or if you're trying to go short, if you're a swing trader, I would keep an eye on $175 if we decide to break down, which is, of course, a possibility. Like the video if you found value in the content. Don't forget to subscribe. If you are not already subscribed, let me know also in the comment section, what direction do you think Ethereum is about to break out and why? Am I missing something on the charts? Let me know. 
Um, I would love to hear your opinions. I love learning from you guys and with you guys also. Aside from that, I want to remind you never to invest more than you can afford to lose in cryptocurrency and to enjoy the ride. Thanks, guys.